from the makers of Coldwater Omo, John Steed knew that somewhere amongst the mound of papers in Bradley Marler's office was the clue to where Mary Maxim Martin lived. Bradley was dead, and Steed knew that Maxie had killed him. Steed suspected that Maxie and his partner Jolly Jenkins were responsible for all the murders in this very unusual case, so he searched furiously for the address. And then... Gresham Grange, otherwise known as Grease Paint Grange. Of course, the old-time variety artist's home. That's where they live, and that's where the whole affair will be solved. Now, how the devil am I going to be accepted as an old-time theatrical artist? Well, perhaps it won't be so hard after all. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Over a million South African housewives are delighted with the sparkling clean wash they get from cold water Omo. Like Mrs. Connie Goldie of the Innocent. Well, I found myself without any hot water one Monday morning. Yes. So I dashed out and I bought a packet of cold water Omo. And I've never been without cold water Omo since. Yes, once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans best. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. Sherry Ann Field chooses Lux for her complexion. I always use Lux. I find it so very rich and creamy, and I love the perfume. Like Sherry Ann, choose Lux for your complexion. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. The sixth and final episode of this story in which John Steed and Emma Peel stage their own act and unmask the real villain in the curious case of... Stop me if you've heard this. Mrs. Peel had been driven down to the site of Farrington Hall by Lord Dessington. John Steed had appointed Mrs. Peel as Lord Dessington's personal bodyguard, and Mrs. Peel hadn't done too good a job. Lord Dessington was dead, strangled by Maxie Martin, who, with his partner Jolly Jenkins, had made a smooth getaway. But Mrs. Peel had followed them and ended up at Grease Paint Grange. Outside the building, she swung the car to a stop. To her surprise, she found herself confronted by a policeman. Good afternoon, madam. What seems to be the trouble? Oh, well, I can't explain, officer, but I've traced two men here. I suspect they're criminals. Thank goodness you're here. Will you please stand by? I may need you to make an arrest. Well, of course, ma'am. I'm on duty. Got me truncheon ready, and where I hit, no grass ever grows. Like this. Oh. Mrs. Peel, taken completely by surprise, collapsed under the blow. Maxie Martin caught her expertly and whistled to Jolly Jenkins. <whistles> Give us a hand, Jolly. A bird in the bush is worth two in the cinema. Right. Ooh, they always fall, don't they? <laughs> Funny how you can always fall a woman. Bless them. What would Madeline's be without them, eh? Ah, too true. Let's get her inside. Mr. Punch will want to know the latest happenings. Now, you take her feet. Uh, I'll hold her under the arms. Here we go now, then. Uh, oh, oh, we're very, very, very pleased that you come to join us. And when, when you've, you've got to come, you've got to come. <laughs> Mr. Punch, on his small stage in the main hall, was interested. No one saw you? Are you sure? Ah, sure we are. She was alone, wasn't she, Jolly? That's right. She followed us. What could we do? We didn't bring her here. She must know about Lord Dessington, though. Then there is only one thing to be done. This woman must be eliminated. Yes. <laughs> 
Yeah, 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 the pollution, that's, that's all very well, but I can't kill a young bird like her. I agree with everything you say, but no, no, I can't do that. You killed often, Mary Maxie. Why the distinction? I, I don't know. I, I just can't. Can you, Jolly? I don't know. I've never tried. <laughs> Why don't you hand her over to Frederick? He's always looking for extras in his act. That's OK with me, Mr Punch. Let me have her. For me new sawing a woman in arms act. I need a new assistant. Well, the other four didn't last long. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> now, look, that's not fair. Listen to me. That'll be horrible death. Look, Mr Punch, look, if, if we got a killer, then let's do it quickly. Then who will volunteer to do it quickly? You say you won't, Maxie? No, I've already told you, no. Mm, then it is agreed. Give her to fiery Frederick. <laughs> well, that's agreed then. So what? What happens now? What's the next move, Mr. Punch? We have nearly completed the mission. There will be a final meeting here this evening at six o'clock. Understood? But there's only one more left on the board and... Six o'clock! Ladies and gentlemen, that's enough! Oh. <laughs> John Steed prepared to invade the old-timer's home. He drove up to the main entrance and introduced himself as... I'm Gentleman Jack, a smile, song, and a, an umbrella. And the umbrellas, and the umbrellas... Oh, I'm afraid and, uh, we're full up. Oh. Can I help you otherwise? Uh, well, this is Grease Paint Grange, uh, the home for retired West End fun makers. Oh, uh, yes, A stopping over right. place for resting um, artists. Uh, Yes, well, I'm resting. Right. Oh, not here, you're not. No vacancies. You can't stay here. Not even if you're good. Oh, but surely, surely you can't have any objections to showing me around. I mean, I may be able to put a little money into the place. Angel Jack, that's what I've been called in my time. I am married an angel. Some people have all the luck, of course. Uh, thank you. Uh, lead on, then, would you? Letter the lass from Lancashire um, had no reply to Steed in this ebullient mood. He walked straight past her into the main room. Oh, 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 very well. I suppose a quick look round won't do any harm. Now, this is the main hall. We're all very comfortable here, as you can see. This is, of course, the lounge. A small Punch and Judy stand. All oh, entertainment's laid on. Can't wait for a vacancy. And uh, tell me, what's behind the main curtain? Oh, oh, well, uh, that, that's, that's just an ante room. Uh, the guest rooms are this way. The apartments down there are private. Uh, they're this way. Letty ushered Steed through the rooms at breakneck speed. As far as he could tell, it all appeared to be normal and above board. But as he was leaving... Uh, well, th thank you. Thank you so very much. Very, very kind of you. Uh, goodbye. Steed noticed Lord Dessington's car parked outside. On the front seat was a handbag, Mrs. Peel's. Steed made his way back into the Grange, this time by the back windows. Steed found himself behind the stage curtains of the main lounge. The act, fiery Frederick and his death-defying assistant, was in active preparation. Mrs. Peel, gagged and bound, was on a platform, her body encased in a wooden box. Fiery Fred was sharpening a saw. Steed knew he couldn't let this go on much longer. He approached the illusionist and said, I want to see a smash hit. What? This. <laughs> All right, all right, Mrs. Peel. Soon have you out and... <clears throat> no gags, eh? Oh, thanks, Steve. About time you got in on the act. This place is... What the devil's been going on? I wouldn't know. I followed two men down here and got knocked out over the head by a fake policeman. I came to with that character about to give a performance. What now, Steve? <sighs> Mingle with the other guests and try to look like an old, out-of-work actor. Well, the way I feel at the moment, that should be easy. Hey, listen. Come on, we don't want to miss the final curtain. Oh, we'll lead the way. Let's get this show off the road. Thank heavens, Fiery Frederick's act has been cancelled. Lead on. <laughs> Attention! I have reviewed the situation and decided that we will call a halt to operations for a while. Hey, what you talking about? Quiet, quiet, quiet. Doing very well. But I don't understand, Mr. Punch. We've nearly completed our task. There's only one member of the board of the Capital Land and Development Company left. Yeah, that's right. With them all wiped out, we can take over the theatres again. We'll all be back in business. Yes, you can't stop us now. Right, everybody? Yes. 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 Yes
business like show business like no business. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. What, what are you whoopsie talking about now? Now, the whole thing was my idea. And it is I who will have the final say. No, we want action. We've been out of action long enough. Yeah. Action you will get. But the wrong move will jeopardize everything we have achieved so far. Why? Why? I don't get that. Jolly is right. Why will it? Believe me, I know what is best. Like you, I want to see us all working again. All the theaters in lights. The audience is applauding. The curtains going up. The rebirth of vaudeville. Hey! He's right. The rebirth of vaudeville. And that means live acts, not puppets and Punch and Judy shows, but, but flesh and blood again. Who are you to question my decisions? Uh, Gentleman Jack, a song, a smile, and an umbrella. And the umbrellas, and the umbrellas. Yeah, she's right. We don't want to be told what to do by a tatty end of the pier Punch and Judy show. Of course not. We've taken orders from puppets for too long. Oh, I bet he isn't even fully paid up at equity. Uh, down with Punch and Judy show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steed and Emma Peel were always good at stirring up trouble, and this time they excelled themselves. Within minutes, it was a free-for-all. Steed got in a quick jab at Maxie, who thought it was delivered by Jolly. They came to blows quite easily. Why, oh, you dirty, rotten little... You always ruin air, right? Oh, you dare you hogging the limelight all the time, always wanting top belly up. Peel, turn over the punch and judy. Oh, from under the wrecked stage crawled the figure of Mr. Punch. Seagrave. Of course. It had to be him, the only one left. Get out of my way. Come on, this gun on. is loaded. And, and so I there's Truncheon, the old one too, Mrs. Peel. Right. One. Two. Oh. Oh. Executed. Seagrave assumed that being the only one left on the board of directors of the Capital Land and Development Company, he'd be able to ruin the high plan. Well, he nearly succeeded, too, didn't he? He had his own contractors. He could have planted explosives underground and sabotaged the whole thing before it even began. How very pathetic. Using out-of-work actors to bring it all about. Sad, really. Oh, well, I suppose none of them will ever make the big time now. No, might get some work on South African television. I'd like to see a show this evening, Mrs. Peel. A live show? Oh, I don't think so. Thanks, Steve. I think I'd sooner take in a movie. Perhaps a horror movie. Bound to be one on somewhere. So much less frightening than the real thing. I agree. I prefer really witty comedy. Which reminds me, did I ever tell you the story about... Oh, well, stop me if you've heard this one, won't you? <laughs> And with a vicious uppercut, Jimmy Anderson finishes trimming his whole hedge in just three hours, 11 minutes. Great work, Jimmy. you play any other sport? Yes, dominoes. You're looking pretty cool, Jimmy. What do you drink? Do you use shield for sportsmen, of course? Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. So many women tell us that once an OMO user, always an OMO user. Women like Mrs. Clark of East London. This is certainly the one that I've stuck to. And it's all I get now. Yes, Goldwater OMO cleans best. Over a million housewives have proved it. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.